Hi, um, Alison Spice, and this is my Skill 7 presentation for the Delivery Unit. Um, before we start, I've got the camera running to record the session. Is there anybody who's got a problem with this session being recorded? No, 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 no. Great. Well, thanks for coming along to the second session. I'm just wondering if everyone, I think, is aware that the closest exit is out the door in the event of an emergency and we've got bathrooms just to our left, okay? So, can anyone remember anything that we did in the first session? What about the working of the diverse people? We worked it out uh, who comes from Australia, who's got relatives coming from other side of countries, and how it is affected the... Um, we kind of worked out that in our room, we're actually a lot more diverse than even what the Australian census said, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what we did was we had a look at our own cultural identity because that's what helps us make determinations about our understanding of others. And we looked at some of the issues that make up why, why are people diverse and that include where we were born, what language we speak. Nearly everyone in the class spoke a second language. Um, types of food, environment, spirituality, religious beliefs, perceptions, education, music, dance, traditions, a person's life history. Um, and we actually watched a video from 1960s, which was just really so out of touch with the modern multicultural Australia that we've got today and we understood the first reflection. So moving forward, what we're going to do today is we're actually going to divide into multicultural pairs in this room and we're going to have a look at a workplace scenario that's a scene from a movie and we're actually going to see what went right and wrong in the workplace and see if we can work out what would have made it better. So basically that's going to involve us being able to recognise whether or not people were behaving appropriately. Um, so we also um, are going to come up to the front at the end of that exercise and we're going to um, have a look at how you guys all have examined the scene. So just to put this in the context of the aged care environment, 2016 census said that four in 10 Australians over 65 were not born in this country. Wow. Um, and even if you were born here, that doesn't necessarily, you know, preclude the fact that you might have a second language, you might have, you know, any other range of cultural perceptions as well, doesn't it? So, Drilling down a bit further, so it's a, it's, a, it's a big deal. How are you going to look after people properly? You've got to actually acknowledge um, what their needs are, what their preferences are. Um, so you have to recognise that this, I don't expect that anyone can really read the exact numbers, but the purpose of this is simply to show that this is again from the census. There are certain suburbs where there's really, really high numbers of group, like for example, there's a lot of Indian people happen to live in Blacktown. Um, there's lots and lots of Iraqis live in Fairfield. So actually where you work might really strongly influence how you should educate. You know, if you're gonna be working with a lot of Italian people, for example, maybe it could be very beneficial for you to understand a lot about Italian food, to understand even just a few words of uh, language and so on and so forth. So depending where you live um, and where you work, you, you actually might go out of your way to actually learn a lot about a particular culture so that you can work with your clients more effectively. So the Australia that I was born into, which was basically the same year as the video that we watched last time, um, was very anti-Japanese. Very anti-Japanese. You had so many Australians who either have had family members killed in the war or who've been POWs and so forth. I live in Neutral Bay. Neutral Bay is like little Japan. Like 
in every every third dress wants Japanese. There are hairdressers that are entirely Japanese, but this would have never been the case. You know, people were very, very openly, very openly anti-Japanese, and now, you know, people of my parents' age group, they used to stand in the quadrangle and have announcements made about Japanese people when they went to school. You know, they were very strongly ingrained. And I, I think if you have a look at where I live now, you can see how the existence of sharing food and other things like that, that's actually brought all these different cultures together. And you don't have that kind of, you don't have that kind of animosity expressed. All of you guys probably live in an area, do any of you live in an area that is particularly associated with a, a culture? Yeah. yeah. Where, what culture is your area associated with? Uh, Marathon, which is very Greek. Greek. Oh, and yeah. Greek and Vietnamese, actually. Yeah? Oh, yeah. it's Greek and yeah, more Vietnamese. Yeah. I live in inner west uh, Hong Kong. And when I moved from Italy, that helped me a lot. Because yeah. I didn't feel so far away, because I could still get out of my house, my home, and listen to people speak Italian. And all people meeting in the little piazza having uh, an Italian conversation, and I totally admire I used to live in Lyca, and uh, that was very Italian mm -hmm. there too. Um, what? Asheville. Asheville. Lots of Chinese. Yeah, I, I, was there on, <laughs> I was there on the weekend. It, it really, you know, there's a really strong Chinese presence there, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, Chatham. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Very, yes. very. Yes. Alex? That's quite a lot of Chinese there now. Yeah, there's Nepalese. Nepalese. Yeah. It's got a lot of Chinese restaurants, I think. I don't know if it's so much about the numbers, but it's got lots of, yeah. Look, yeah, I mean, it's pretty multicultural. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a mix it's, of everything. It's a mix. What about you? Oh, I didn't love it. Oh, fine. Look, okay. All right, okay. Well, look, let's just have a little bit of fun. Nobody, when I was born, would have thought that I would be going around eating raw fish twice a week, but due to the proximity of, you know, all these Japanese restaurants on my doorstep, I do eat raw fish at least twice a week, right? So it's a bit of a tough call, but I'm going to say that my favourite cuisine is Japanese, so let's just do a little poll here in the room. Specifically, Satin Sashimi is my favourite. I've got a second though? Okay, all right. Harry, what's your favourite cuisine? No pressure. No pressure. You, you can say a dish or a style of food, doesn't matter. Uh, spaghetti. Spaghetti, <laughs> Italian. Oh, okay. Boring. <laughs> okay, Rita. I just ate Japanese yesterday, sushi and sashimi. And do you think it's, is it, is it your favourite? Yeah? Oh my, well, we're doing really well. Yeah, see, that's, that's top five for me as well, Vietnamese. Yeah. Especially so Vietnamese pancake. I really like Vietnamese oh, pancake. Ah, yeah. uh, yeah. Natasha. Oh, yeah. I'm going to say great. All right. <laughs> 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 Maybe her mother would never speak to her again. I said something. Jessie? Oh, Vietnamese. Oh, Vietnamese. Oh, Vietnamese. Oh, Vietnamese. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's really two parts to this scene. The first part is Hiramitsu meets Sandy. And it, it speaks for itself, so I'm not going to say 
Anything too much?
But for example, we'll just look at one thing together as a class. Now, one thing that so obviously went badly um, in the first exchange is that he's prevented her from the car. And like, she didn't even have one and she just chucked it in her pocket. Yeah, um, and then obviously, you know, there was there's all the bowing that goes with the car exchange. And obviously the gentlemen back in the office have been training in culturally appropriate behaviour, haven't they? So, and they've had language lessons and, and everything, you know. So really, she was doomed to failure, wasn't she? So it's so specific, like it's, you're supposed to have an English on one side, Japanese in the other, it's supposed to be held in a certain way, presented in a certain way, um, and you certainly shouldn't just take the card and go, yeah, like, in the pocket. <laughs> like, it's just disrespectful. Um, so, that's an example of what went wrong, and I'm going to leave the rest of it to you guys um, to have a little look now. So, can I get there's a space on this form for 10 things, but I'm not necessarily expecting that each pair comes up with 10 ideas, but if you do, great. So in our multicultural group here, can I get Alex and Alexander to do when Hiramitsu meets Sandy, but I'd like you to put yourself in Hiramitsu's shoes and think like, what was he thinking about what's going on here? So you're actually going to be looking at things from his perspective. And then I'll get Jesse and Natasha to do that scene as well, but I want them to be Sandy. Mm -hmm. And um, what, what is Sandy? thinking it's going on when he's like just standing there and she's she's trying to put the bag in the car and up he goes and all the rest of it. So it, it, it is and I want you guys to do Hiramitsu meets Richard and Bear and I'd like you two to be Richard and Bear. And that leaves you guys. Japanese. Japanese. Would anyone like to have another look at the scene again now that they know, um, like now that they, you know which part of it you're doing? Do you want to watch it again? Thank you. 
from Richard and me. Okay. So the first thing we noticed is their respect for Hiramitsu on his arrival. So they were they were bowing, yeah, and bowing to the appropriate level, which is the uh, Japanese custom. They were waiting there for him when he arrived. Um, so that showed punctuality, which the Japanese culture is very, very important. And they were also dressed appropriately for the occasion. And gave him the correct greeting on his arrival and they spoke to him in Japanese. That's right. So the greeting you can see on the chariot of that is a tall one. First we just have to shake the hand and then just remember the oh, arch. Mm, so yeah, let's do that mm. and then greet it properly. Um, and also, you know, speaking in Japanese, it's kind of saying, I'm meeting you halfway. I know who you are, and I'm kind of halfway. If you can't speak, that's okay. And then what you also said to him. And what you also said to him was, what yeah, you yeah, have said, yeah, yeah. you know, if the words very warming, respectful, because it's a good card, but gratefully, uh, have respect as well. Um, yeah. I said, didn't shake, didn't go you know, straight away, go and shake, shake the hand ferociously as, as Sam did. Um, oh, and the other big thing we noticed that once uh, Hiramitsu spoke in English, they reverted and spoke, yeah, switch it up. switched around yeah. and spoke in English too. They didn't say anything like, oh, so you can speak English. <laughs> <laughs> I saw <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thanks, it was really thorough, wasn't it, Brian? Thank you. Let's see the Natasha. Alright, so we did hear a meet to meet Sandy, and she stopped that. So I think we all gathered her Japanese style of the greeting. She had no idea or no clue um, what to do with the business card, uh, why he was bowing, you know, why he, she didn't read the card to just his point. Yeah. Um, and see the card on the yeah. one hand. She then went to shake his hand yeah. like that. And she said, clearly no idea about culture. To her defense, she may not have been briefed. So we'll give her that. Um, I put down, she picked up his luggage. So she sort of got the message that, you know, he wasn't gonna do it because he was sort of looking. So she's picking up the luggage and she's struggling and he's looking at her and she just got the picture like, well, I'm basically chauffeuring you now. And um, that's when he sat in the back. She, she, she said to him, no, no, you don't have to. And he just closed the door. Yeah. Um, and as they're driving along, she's speaking to him in English, so she, there was no attempt or effort to try to speak to him in the Japanese language. And the radio. And the radio and the air con, and she's yelling at him. Yeah. Maybe he couldn't understand, so we all automatically think that if we raise our voices, we can understand to it more, so she's screaming. So it is your kind of respect here. Correct. So she's yelling, expects an answer, didn't acknowledge culture, so, and he just went, well, I'm not even gonna tell you I can speak English, because, you, you know, I'm not gonna even acknowledge you. Yeah, he was, you know, he just wrote it off. He was deeply much. affected. Yeah. yeah, so she was late as yeah. well. Um, so that's a no-no. Uh, the dress code, she was obviously dressed down, or like it was all, like it was immaculate in the middle of the desert, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and she touched. Oh yeah, she touched, touched him. Down. And I think that's it, because I think they're not supposed to be touching yeah. it. So I think that's the, yeah, yeah. we observed. So, yeah. 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 so, lucky last, Alexander and Alex, can you share with us what you Thank you. 
healthcare practice in the Yeah, yeah. So that's it. I'm She really didn't know anything about that business card. Um, she didn't even have one in his back. And, yeah, just chuck them in her pocket and yeah. He's, he's in her army, she's in a pair of jeans. She touched him, and particularly because she's a woman and he's a man, that really was a no-no. And it's greedy for formal, and there just wasn't any of that going on, and there certainly wasn't any bowing going on. Um, in my opinion, they, they threw Sandy under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> like, XPR Minerals needed to train everybody who's going to come into contact with international staff. So, if that's a regular thing, they should actually run sessions like this cultural diversity training in the workplace so that things, you know, are more hum harmonious, you know. So, obviously, depending on your workplace, it might be appropriate for you to be training specifically in Japanese culture, but there might be a different culture such as, you know, the areas that we talked about earlier that are appropriate for you. Because she accidentally offended him. It wasn't deliberate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so what we've done today is we've um, examined the prevalence of cultural diversity and in Australia's over 65 populations, if you remember that, you know, the post-war migrants are getting old. And um, we, we actually need to really skill up um, to provide appropriate care for them. Um, we understood what cultural competence is because clearly Sandy wasn't culturally competent and the other, the other people in the company have been trained. Um, we used our observation skills to recognise culturally appropriate, respectful behaviour. Um, and I think we've understood the importance of respect in the workplace. So that situation didn't work because respect wasn't shown. Um, and we also divided into culturally uh, diverse pairs to work on an activity to consider um, how we can identify and manage issues. So I'm afraid next session is a little bit dry. Um, <laughs> we're going to be looking at the legalities behind um, all of because what we're talking about is legislated um, and there are a range of laws and there's also processes and organisations you can complain to if you feel that you've been discriminated against on the basis of your race, your religion or any of these other factors that we've been talking about. So that's what we'll be looking at next session and thank you very much everyone. Thank you.